we're live once again, kiddies, for this wonderful rustic edition of Wrestle AM. Of course, I'm driving the bus that all that we're all going to hell in here. We got Boom Boom shaking the room live from Omaha, Nebraska, and of course, back from the judo finals right there in Tokyo, Japan, way eight thousand miles away from me, my brother from another mother, the huge one, David Kokotis. What is up, Dave? Ah, nothing much, nothing much. Yeah, going judo crazy here. Got to see the Tokyo Judo Grand Slam, and it was really cool. But, you know, there's moments in life where you become a proud papa. You know, I'm an older guy. I have, I have more kids than you probably have Pokemon. And, and, you know, there's pro moments. Like one time my daughter, all her friends cut school. Because in Japan, you go to school all the time. It's absolutely ridiculous what they put their kids through. That's why they're so good at math. They'll never leave school. Well, it, it, she had to go to school from like 4 to 8 p.m. that night. It was extra school. And all her friends skipped. And she didn't. She was the only kid that showed up. And I asked her, like, oh, why didn't you skip? Because, you know, I'm not really, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm not the textbook parent. So I asked her, why didn't you skip school? And she's like, well, I'd rather be smart than cool. And I was like, oh, oh. I love you so much. You're the greatest daughter ever. I don't deserve you. But my son had a moment like that. My son had a moment like that. Which called my we were watching the judo finals and we're like we're celebrating, having a high five, like, yeah, Japan just won the gold medal. Well, we'd celebrate America too, but yeah, not so good at judo. Sorry folks. But anyway, we're high fiving that they made it to judo. And my son's like, Oh, that's cool. What what does the gold medal mean? Because he's watched the Olympics, he's watched a lot of sports. He's like, what does the gold medal mean? I'm like, well, it means you're the best in the world. And my son points at the guy who won and goes, oh, so he's the CM Punk of judo? And I was like, oh, oh my God, you're such a genius. I'm so proud of you. So, yeah, winning the gold medal at the judo Grand Slam, uh, that means you're the CM Punk of judo now. So, wow. congratulations. And boom, boom, I got a little warning before you drive the bus. All right. I, I cannot honestly tell you the show was good. Oh, we're talking TNA Challenge here. Boom, boom says he'll give okay. TNA a chance. I force myself to watch TNA, and I force myself to watch WWE, even when it's bad. I just feel, you know, obligated to watch it. Um, sinister like that. Boom, boom does not watch TNA for all you new viewers out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. welcome aboard. Uh, but... Boom Boom said he would give TNA a chance if they did six good weeks. And good in today's generation is passable. Something yeah. that doesn't make you angry, drive you insane. And we have bashed TNA before. But I think WWE the last three weeks has been horrible. We, you know, there's, it's a new week coming up, so maybe they'll do better this week. And even though I bash TNA a lot, I think TNA, the last three weeks, not of all time, let's not get fucking ridiculous, the last three weeks has been better than WWE. And I wouldn't say it was good. I wouldn't be like, oh my god, it's ECW good, or oh, Ring of Honor and it's Prime, or Dragon Gate, or New Japan good. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. It's not WrestleMania, Triple Mania, it's not even Wrestle Kingdom. But it's been passable. And in today's wrestling television time, Passable seems to be the new good. We can't we can't expect good. We expect passable. So boom, boom, boom. We'll watch TNA in six weeks if TNA can keep it up. But they do have a pay per view and the last pay per view. <laughs> oh, I know TNA fans liked it, but it did not get good reviews from us. So TNA has three weeks of passable television. We won't say good. We'll say passable. Boom, boom. Are you scared? You got three more weeks. Or do you think TNA will screw it up eventually, especially with a pay-per-view coming up? This is TNA, and their track record with pay-per-views, not so good. So, but, you know, hey, I, have, I really hope. I really hope I have to watch TNA. I really hope that they go strong for another three weeks, and I finally have to go, okay, Dave, uh, after six solid shows and a pay-per-view, I'll do it. But this is why I said six weeks, because six weeks – will cover a pay-per-view. You have to get to your next big, um, I guess your middle term, your short-term goal is the next show, your mid mid-term goal is the next pay-per-view, and your major goal is the next main, whatever main pay-per-view, main quarterly pay-per-view. 
and that's why I said six. If you can get through six, which is about roughly three shows and at least three shows in a pay per view, if you can get through that and still have a solid direction, it means you're on the right track. But anyway, no, no, hold on. I do have to warn you. Even though it was passable, I have to kind of give you a little bit of the bad. But Austin Aries saves it. It's oh, okay. kind of like Impact, except they toned down aces and eights a lot, and it's Impact meets Hogan knows best. And you mm. think that might be a bad thing. You combine those two, but what makes the Hogan knows best segments is Austin Aries is just a complete jerk off to him. So just imagine watching the MTV, or was it VH1? It was anyway, VH1. imagine watching the reality show Hogan Knows Best, except Austin Aries is on commentary, just being a complete jerk-off. So even though it's a bad idea on paper, it's been passable, thanks to Austin Aries. Okay, awesome. So we got three more weeks. I hope TNA keeps being passable, and I hope you have to watch it. Because <laughs> i got to watch it no matter what. At least, I don't know why. Like I don't understand why I put these rules on myself. Yeah, you're a glutton for punishment. I watch them all. I watch I watch the superstars. I watch the main event. The main event, though, I honestly well, think... Because you've got nothing to do. You only work two hours like a month. Sir, that is not true. I work six hours a month. Thank oh. you very much. <laughs> How dare you insult my work schedule. <laughs> it's mostly because of health reasons. I'm not a yeah. lazy asshole. Well, I am, but I... Move it on. <laughs> boom, boom! It's your turn to yeah, drive let, the bus. Yeah, let's drive this. Here, let me shift here in the first gear. Okay, here we go. First thing I want to start off with, and this is not necessarily a downer, but we we got to announce the passing of uh, Buddy Roberts. He uh, passed away at the age of, what was it, six, I believe 65. He had... Uh, he had actually been battling uh, throat cancer and was actually starting to beat that, but uh, he recently lost a bat with pneumonia. He wound up getting double pneumonia, which is pneumonia in each lung, and uh, passed away from that one. So, I, you know, condolences go out to his family. But it, it, it's sad, but to be honest, Dave, that's the way professional wrestlers should die. And I'm not saying everybody should get double pneumonia and die or get cancer and die. I'm just saying professional wrestlers should die as old men. That's the way it should be. No more of this ODN, no more of this, you know, crap. Just go to our old, you know, ripe old age and go to natural causes. So, I mean, that's just the way I think it should go. Uh, Buddy Roberts, one-third of the legendary Fabulous Freebirds. I think they'll be most known for their infamous feud back in World Class Championship Wrestling with the Von Eric family. I think they played off great with each other. Uh, of course, they're legends in my neck of the woods in the Deep South. I mean, they were huge in Georgia, uh, you know, came in through Alabama uh, and Texas. You know, of course, I mentioned world class. I think Buddy did get the um, the brunt of it. Whenever they were trying to have the Von Ericks get their hands on uh, on the Freebirds, they always hit. But they always went through Buddy first. Buddy was always the whipping boy. Unfortunately, he. Uh, would get pounded, and then maybe they would get to Terry Bam Bam Gordy, but they never, ever got to Michael P.S. Hayes. And that's what drove people crazy is Hayes would stir everything up, he would get all the heat, and then he would duck all the consequences, and it drove people crazy. Uh, actually, uh, Kevin Von Erich just re uh, inter had an interview. He was talking about it, and he said well, it was a funny thing. was um, See, Kevin Von Erich wrestled barefoot, and uh, he did a spot where he went up and he – kicked, uh, hit uh, Buddy Roberts in the mouth, and kicked him in the mouth, or, or his foot went towards his mouth, and he winded up getting a, a cut on his foot and had, requ had to require stitches, and then I think they were, I don't know if it was joking or serious, but they they were saying when they were stitching him up, somebody had come up and mentioned and says, hey, you know, Buddy doesn't brush his teeth, you know, you might want to get that checked out. Yeah, um, on PW Torch, they have a good interview with uh, Kevin Von Erich. We'll put a link down in doobly-doo once, you know, this is uh, on YouTube. And um, the one thing that I, because, you know, I, you know, I'll try to keep it kayfabe as possible. I have a rare health condition, awesome Titus, and <laughs> I have too much awesome in my bot. Okay, yeah, I'm about to say, since when did stupid become a disease? Exactly. It's contagious. Look out. But um, on Kevin Von Erich had an interview on PW Torch. We'll link it on the thing. And 
he kind of was okay with it, according to Kevin Von Erich. He, like, that's how I kind of want to go out, that I just accept it. I lived a great life. It's time to go out. And it's cool to, you know, it, I mean, it sucks that anyone has to die. But if you are going to have to pass away, it would be cool to go out on your own terms. And according to the interview, it seemed that's the way he went out. Yeah, and the yeah. thing that I remember the most about the Freebirds is, I now I don't remember this. This is from documentaries, so let me rephrase that. This is from documentaries. They were the first ones to come out to music, the Bad Street USA. I don't know how factual that is, but met a couple documentaries I've watched get credit to Freebirds for coming out to music. And also, to me, the Freebirds, they mastered free agencies. Nowadays, it's kind of hard to be a free agent. You got TNA, um, you got TNA, ROH, WWE, New Japan, and maybe down in Mexico, you know, that you can make a legit living. Um, a couple foreigners go to smaller feds in Japan, but... But that's where you make the the best money. But back in the day, in the Freebirds, there were territories and people. And to me, what I remember most about the Freebirds is they mastered being a free agent. They would come into a territory, start a giant feud, and leave. And, you know, a lot of guys did that. But to me, I just think the Freebirds mastered that. <coughs> and so they, they were great. And the AWA, of course, is what I remember them from. Um, WCCW, they were also famous for, so I did so much great stuff, so let's just try to remember the good things, and according to the interview on PW Torch, he went out on his own terms, so, yeah. it's, I don't know in own terms, but he kind of, like, accepted it, and it didn't yeah, so I mean, I mean, it's, it's different if you die suddenly, I mean, I'm almost ready to, you know, if I had to go out, you know, I'd like to at least know that it's coming, and then I can tie up my loose ends and just make peace with my maker, and just be ready, as opposed to just you know one day I'm there, boom, car accident, I'm gone. You know, if, if I had a choice, you know, and I know none of us really you know are going to have a choice, but you know, <laughs> if it, it's nice to know the end's coming and you can just wrap up everything and just and be ready, and you know, there you go, and. Uh, you know, they he did some good stuff with the uh, I think it was the Legends of World Class. It was a uh, WWE put out the DV uh, put out the DVD about the days of World Class Championship Wrestling, and he was on there and he was all rough. He had a voice box, you know, trying to talk because um, of the throat cancer he had, and uh, it's actually kind of ironic because uh, earlier this year Michael P. S. Hayes was remembering the death of uh, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, and he did a song. And I, I don't know if it's still on WWE.com. It's probably floating around on uh, YouTube. It's called Freebird Road. And they were saying that the reason Michael P.S. Hayes did this was because he was angling to get the Freebirds in the WWE Hall of Fame, which would be coming up, you know, this upcoming year. And it just kind of featured him around the grave of, uh, and I'm dead serious here, he was, around, he was at the graveside of Terry Gordy and was just doing this song and even did some shots of Jack Daniels at his grave. In, in the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, remember, I remember seeing it. So. so, Dave, so Dave, when you die, what do you want me to do a shot of when I'm at your grave? Uh, grape juice. I am a big grape juice drinker. I probably drink more grape juice than humanly possible. Yes. So, wow, wow what a straight edge society fucking answer. <laughs> You know, like you ever just pour alcohol into the grape juice, but yeah. This is one for me and one for my homie. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm so hopefully you know everything works out for his family, and I don't know. I'm always bad at saying this. You think I would be better at it? It's because you know I worked in the media so long, and so many sports athletes die, and also so many wrestlers die. And then I was in the Marine Corps, and you might this might come as a shock. People die doing that job. But I really, I'm kind of horrible at it. I'm just like, oh, I'll remember the good times. You know, I, I wish I, I wish I was better. Because some people, like, really are good at giving speeches about someone passing away. But I'm not that guy, so I apologize. But no. hopefully, hopefully his family, you know, is good. And, you know, I don't know. That <laughs> awkward right. moment of how do we treat the moment. next topic. Got, you know, rest in peace there, buddy Roberts. We miss you. Freebirds forever. Um, oh, well, well, 
let's 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 talk about this. Do you, do you think you know they'll put him in the Hall of Fame right away, or do you think it should be towards the end? Because the Freebirds definitely belong in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, without a doubt. But see, I'm trying to think maybe down in a Southern state. Not, oh, maybe in Texas because they feuded with Von Erichs. Because I when it comes to the WWE Hall of Fame, because they do it at WrestleMania and it travels. Mm-hmm. I think location to me matters. So, right. you know, like, I think Bam Bam Bigelow should get in because it's in New Jersey. I think this is the year they should put Bam Bam Bigelow in. But that's just me. I think they should have a connection to the city somehow. I don't know. I just think it makes it more special. I think yeah, probably I, for I, sports okay, I agree. I mean, I, I don't disagree. I, I think it would go over really well in either Atlanta or Dallas would probably be the two best places to induct him in. Yeah. So I kind of wonder who they're going to get this year. They've really been keeping it under wraps, but I, every time the WWE keeps kind of something under wraps, I kind of wonder if they don't know what they're doing. Well, <laughs> you know, know what I'm saying? They... Like if you hear it on the Internet and it's accurate and it gets done out, but usually when you hear nothing, I just picture in my head, and maybe it's because I know like a little bit about it, they have no idea what they're doing. I know, so... Yeah, we have no idea what we're doing, and we're about to induct the next uh, class in the Cocoa Sports Hall of Fame. Yes, we are. And I'll laugh, but dude, I just wrote a column about it, and we're going to put in a second class, we're going to put in tons of people in, and I kid you not, the arguments between the staff are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You have Boom Boom, who is like, and it's just all of fame for a website, combat sports. It's anything to do with judo, sumo, boxing, wrestling, every style of wrestling, amateur wrestling, you know, MMA, mixed martial arts, the whole part. So we started this because, you know, a long time ago, we were like one of the first people when we had a magazine to jump on to combat sports. And we also love pro wrestling. And I know it's evolved, and a lot of people are noobs. Blah, 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 blah. MMA fans have become fucking jerk offs the more popular the sport gets. And I love MMA. But, dude, if I could run over fucking MMA fans with a car, I would. Not not all of them. Just the ones that are like, War Shogun! I don't know who Shogun is because I'm a fucking noob. War Anderson Silva! Those fucking guys. I wear fucking top out. I'm tough. Hey, dude, I just got a fucking green belt in fucking Chinese jiu-jitsu. Those fucking guys run over a fucking car. But where was I going? I just started getting angry at MMA fans. You just had another ADD moment. I did have an ADD moment. You could see it in my eyes. I was like, I was proving a point before that. But, yeah, no. Oh, a Hall of Fame. Boom Boom yes. thinks that one guy should be in the Hall of Fame every 900 years. He's like, if the Hall of Fame means something, we'll, we'll carve it in stone, put it in a time capsule, and 900 years from now, human beings can d- induct the second person into the Hall of Fame. That's Boom Boom's view on it. But then we have David Cooey's view on it. He's like, if anyone ever fought in a UFC, fought in a fight, in a wrestling match, if you ever slap someone by accident, you should be in the Hall of Fame. He just would, like, accept everyone. You're like, oh, you were in a WWE? Hall of Fame. You were in a UFC? Hall of Fame. So we have those two different views. So it's funny, like, how we argue. But what takes the cake is we did a Google Talk, which I wish we kept on the air. That would have been funny. We mm-hmm. did a Google Talk about who's going to go in our next Hall of Fame <laughs> with Jerry and David Cooey and me. And David Cooey and Jerry O'Neill for 45 minutes – Argued if Dan Severin, no, 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 this is embarrassing. Argued if Dan oh, yeah. Severin should make it in this class of Hall of Fame or the third class. They argued for 45 fucking minutes. No, Dan Severin needs to be in the Hall of Fame. No, he can wait till the next class. No, and dude, these arguments be going forever because when you get in matters to us because we're nerds. That's what all a Hall of Fame is, is nerds worshiping yeah. their heroes. But... <laughs> 45 minutes later, I just click on our Hall of Fame. I'm like, ah, guys, Dan Severn's already in. He was actually in the first class. So our our Hall of Fame debates went on for 45 minutes about a guy, if he should or should be, if he should be in. Well, he's definitely going to be in. But they were arguing if it should be a second class guy or a third class guy. And they were arguing like crazy. And then out of nowhere, I was like, ah, guys, he's already in. 
like nothing like wasting 45 minutes of your life. So, and our Hall of Fame is a lot of fun, especially for the staff. I don't know if the viewers like it as much because we argue and we bitch and we're down to about 31 guys. But I kid you not, every member of the staff is like, fuck you. This guy should be in. Fucking not that guy. I fucking hate you all. So it's, uh, Coco Sports is having a nerdgasm war over the Hall of Fame. And then Boom Boom is like, well, in 1922, we put in fucking Abraham Lincoln. We're good for another 600 years. <laughs> so, yeah. So check out the Hall of Fame. It's Hall of Fame month. Um, we are actually, spoiler, actually we already gave the spoiler out, but the first guys that are going in that should have went in yesterday is going to be the Hart family because we can put in whole families. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it, it, that and it beats going, okay, we're going to put in Bret Hart, but what about Owen? Okay, you know what? This clears everything up. If you're a Hart, you're in. And you know what? By de facto, that means Teddy Hart goes in. Woohoo! Greatest yeah. day of my life. Teddy Hart is a Hall of Famer. And the reason we made up this rule is because of the Hart family and because of the Gracie family. Do you now know how to make it a combat sports hall of fame and not putting a whole Gracie family in? Oh, God. David Cooey would just come to my house and choke me out. <laughs> just be like, what? Actually, like but, you know, I think Eve is married to a Gracie or is getting banged by a Gracie. I don't know the situation, but I know Eve and a Gracie are together. So if they're married, that makes Eve a combat sports hall of famer. Already, wow. <laughs> so Eve and Teddy Hart have made the combat sports hall of fame. Oh, it's so sad. So check that out. Every day this month, we're going to try to put out another Hall of Famer. But by the end of the month, we'll definitely yeah. have 31. Yeah, so hopefully hopefully after this year, I'm, I'm just, I am just—I swear to God, if I have to hear, well, when are you going to put Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame to either us or WWE? I swear to God, I'm going to murder somebody with a fucking hammer. I'm sick of hearing it every fucking year. So hopefully this, at least, at least quiet it down on our end. So there you go. Owen Hart's in. You... Fucking internet nerds, you can stop bitching, at least at us, and go bitch at WWE. Well, hell, it ain't going to happen to WWE for, at least for another 20, 30 years. Mark my well, words. They, they got to put the Hart family in. Just do, do what we did. They put the Von Erich family in. Oh, yeah. So just put the whole Hart family in. It's kind of like, um, who is it? Bruno, right? Bruno's the one. Yeah. Bruno He's the one that go. fucking they're trying to get, but says fuck off. Oh, fuck it. Put him in. What is he going to do? You know, if LittleTinyCookerSports.com can put Bruno San Martino in their Hall of Fame, I'm sure big-ass WWE can. Mm -hmm. Just be like, bitches, he didn't show up. Fuck him. Here's his award. And I love Bruno, but, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. So. But he always says, he always says, but where's the building? Like, I, I love Bruno, but at the same time, he's <laughs> such a fucking jerk-off. Like, who would do, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, Boom Boom, you're in the Podcast Hall of Fame. Here's a trophy. Thank you so much. Who wouldn't be like, well, where's the, where's the building? <laughs> that was the worst Bruno impersonation ever. Yes, but that was. I love Bruno to death, but sometimes he can be such a dick, an old, bitter dick. But at the same time, maybe that's why we love him still. Yeah, because he reminds him of us. <laughs> yes, yes. He's just old, uh, bitter. Old, old bitter. I mean, it's Dickheads, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hall of Fame yeah. on CocoSports.com. Go there. Ooh. First inducting the Hart family. All of them, dude. Teddy Hart, too. Teddy Hart, we got, too. We got, we got more coming, so just uh, keep it at CocoSports.com, K-O-C-O-Sports.com, and, you know, you can check it out as it comes out. Uh, speaking of stuff coming out, well, actually not coming out right now, it's the ECW documentary. It has been pushed back to 2013. It was actually originally supposed to be uh, put out it, around Christmas time, of course, that they're not going to make it now. They're signing some technical stuff, and I, you know, and I'm actually kind of okay with it because I'm one of those people. It's either a people are going to bitch about it because it didn't come out on time, or they're going to bitch about it because it wasn't done well because they rushed it. So I would rather them take their time, you know, push it back and do it right and put out something good than to hurry up and rush it to meet a deadline and you know piss more people off. Am I missing something here? I love ECW like the next guy, but I thought they already had documentaries on ECW. I thought the one-night stand and the rise and fall of ECW. Yeah. 
And didn't they have ECW's bloodiest brawls or, or something like that along those lines? Yeah, blood sport. Yeah, the EC, yeah they had that. They've it got was like volume sport. one, but volume two never came out. It's mm-hmm. like volume one. Well, they've got one where it's all like fan cam footage that WWE just put out. I think it just popped up on Netflix not too long ago. Oh, really? That's kind of interesting. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But I don't know how much more can we learn about ECW. Well, I mean, that's the deal, man. The WWE can't apparently can't make enough money off their own fucking product. They got to mooch off somebody else. See, that's the thing. Is it wasn't bad enough that they basically kind of like killed WWE or you know killed ECW. They brought ECW back, gang banged it, killed it, and now they're digging it up and raping its cor- corpse again. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna buy it, but I'm See? starting to be. I'm right starting there. to become. I'm starting to become like. Uh, you know, just let it be, man. Let the memories be. I don't know. Maybe I'll learn something great about ECW, but I'm gonna go with probably not. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll surprise me. WWE does do a great job on their documentaries. But, I don't know. It's just, you know, TNA does the thing. Shane Douglas. It's kind of, you know. And I was excited about ECW, the new version. And I didn't shit on it like most ECW fans did. But, dude, it just got harder and harder to watch as time went by. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I just... I don't know. I, I think I'm like, I'm done. You know, like, ECW is that girl that broke your heart. You know, at first, you know, you obsess over her. And then, well, uh, psychos like me do. And then after you're done <laughs> obsessing over her, you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't care who she's dating. Ooh, she's dating Derek Coleman? I don't know. Weirdest reference ever. Derek Coleman's never yes, dated any of my ex girlfriends for all I know. But, oh, my God, she's dating Derek Coleman? Good for her. And then eventually you just get, like, tired of it. You know, like, your ex-girlfriend's on Facebook, and she's like, I just had my seventh kid. Would you like to buy something from his school? Like, yeah, listen, dude, I don't understand why we're still Facebook friends. How the fuck did this happen? You know, because at first you're a Facebook friend, and you're like, oh, God, I hope I'm doing better than at life than her. And then every time you fucking something bad happens, you're like, you know what? That sucks. You know, and you're being nice. But you're kind of being nice for the wrong reasons. You're like, man, I hope she thinks I'm a nice guy and fucking wish there was a guy like me. Because what every nerd that's been dumped once is the girl that he was dumped by to eventually go, wow, I wish you dated a nice guy like me. Now, there's two different levels of nerd. There's fucking pathetic nerd that'll be like, oh, God, I'm here for you. But then there's evil, demented nerd, and that's me. And dude, nothing's better than like, oh, man, I wish you dated a guy like me. And like, bitch! I'm fucking living on the goddamn Tokyo. I got my own security. I got three cars. Did I tell you about my condo in Hawaii? Suck it, bitch! <laughs> you know? Now, those are your two reactions. I go for the more immature one. <laughs> <laughs> dude, nothing feels better, dude. Like, for real. I-, I just remember, like, when I was, like, I was so poor as a kid. And then, like, I saved my money in the Marine Corps. And then got my life together. And got, like, a lot of money really fast, which is very bad for a, 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 a poor person that gets money very fast. That's kind of bad for, uh, especially if you have no guidance whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But, dude, nothing was better than seeing an old girlfriend, and I'm fucking driving, like, a gold goddamn fucking Ferrari. I'm over-exaggerating for story effects. And you, like, honk the horn and be like, hey, bitch! Oh, you're working at and just put in some normal person job because you know you're a dick. <laughs> That's it. Oh, you're working at Stan's shoe shop. How's that going for you? Oh, yeah, I'm about to fly to fucking Hawaii, bitch. You know. So yeah, there's two ways to go about it. But basically, you know, I'm like at that phrase of ECW. Like, fuck you. I watched New Japan Dragon Gate. We got something special. All right. Anyway, this was a weird fucking. Yeah, rant. I know. I don't know. I don't know no where. I apologize. Sometimes my rants just go off on fucking crazy. I'm land. used to it by now. That's why I'm here. I try to <laughs> you're like, that you're that like, I'm gonna, you know, like, because the whole thing is, it turns into like freak economics. Here's a question, and then it comes out to here, and you have no idea how you got here, and that's not the problem. The problem is getting back to the beginning. You're like, so UCW DVD is gonna be late, huh? 
mm-hmm. intriguing. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, we're still looking for sponsors for this show. So if you're a pharmaceutical company that makes <laughs> Retlin, you know, there's your per- your perfect case is right there. Have this have this guy right down here. Have him, anyway. Nate, Nate Dakotas. You know, we'd be more than glad to have you here. But here's how I see ECW. I'm a huge fan of it still to this day. Uh, it came out. I think I was in middle. I know I was definitely in middle school when it first started. When it came out, about when I realized about it, it was 1994. Uh, I remember watching it at 1 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday because it was the only time it was on. I had uh, At the time, I had Prime Star. That was the small uh, satellite dish company that was sweeping around through my uh, neck of the woods and would watch it through these sports channels that were based off out of New England. So let's not question my fanhood on this one. The way, the way, I, see, the way I see ECW now is... It was great. It was revolutionary. It changed professional wrestling. But I think a lot of people who were involved with it are basically have now become hypocrites. Let me explain. Go ahead. ECW was started because they were trying to break away with the norm. They were sick and tired of this old school mentality. They were tired of the industry at the time. And you got to bear in mind, this is the same time that you know Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and all those people who jumped over to WCW, there were these old people clinging to their spots, going, you know, I want to be the champion. I've got to be the man, you know. And they weren't making room for the for the young guys. And so ECW broke off from the NWA, from the NWA. Imagine that. And they break off from them and, and do something counterculture wise. They do something that wasn't being done at the time. They were trying to get away from that old school mentality, trying to get away from those old people. And now, here they are now, you know, over 10 years, almost 15 years later, and you've got the same guys living off this old thing. I compare it to like a guy who's in his late 20s, early 30s, who's still wearing his high school letterman jacket. That's the way I see it. That, that is the point. perfect, that is, that is way better than the ex-girlfriend example I gave. That's the exact way I see some of these old ECW, especially Shane Douglas. No offense to Shane Douglas. I love Shane Douglas. I think he's a great talker. I think he's actually a pretty decent wrestler. But when it comes to ECW, he, I mean, my God, Shane, you keep raping the fucking corpse. Dude, let it let it rest, man. I just see it as someone who, you know, it's like that. It was a scene in Varsity Blues. Uh, this movie came about 1998. It was MTV's first ever movie, and I remember because I was, it was cool at the time because I was actually old enough to buy to get into a rated R movie, so I took my cousin and his friend to go see the movie, and I was so cool because, one, I could drive, and two, I could get them in a, into a rated R movie. But there was a scene in there where this old guy, you know, this old, well, I don't say old, but older guy was there, you know, and this is after the football game, and all the football teams there, they've got their Letterman jackets on, they're having a party, drinking beer, and then they had this old guy, or older guy there. He graduated in the 80s. And he's like, oh, I never missed these things. He's like, they're like, you mean to tell me that you graduated in 1987, and yet here we are in 1998, and you're still here at these high school parties, and he was still wearing his old letterman's jacket. And they eventually ran him off. But that's the way I see, you know, a, a lot of these old guys. I mean, there are these old beat-up guys who either never made it for whatever reason or couldn't or, what, or didn't get a chance. And there they are just sitting at the end of the bar going, you know, I used to be somebody. I used to be part of a revolution. People, I mean, we were counterculture. Nobody wanted us. We made a career. And I was a damn good wrestler. Clang. Take another shot. I mean, that's just the exact way I see it right now. They've become your, the your very... Your story's making me really sad, Boom Boom. They've become the very thing they, they set up not to be. They are. They're completely living off something that's been dead for almost 15 years. So, guys, it's time to move on. It really is. And it doesn't mean you can't appreciate the contributions they made. It doesn't mean you can't appreciate the athleticism. It doesn't mean you can't appreciate everything that they've done. But there comes a point where it's time to grow up. you got to move on. you got to keep going. No, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a while because, you know, IPW just put on a reunion show, and they're getting up at old in age. Not, not as old as ECW, but still. How... how... Reunion and documentaries, obviously ECW's was beaten to the ground. How often should a big company, uh, not even big, but it's a small, a successful company, uh, we're talking PCW, IPW, ECW, how, how often do you think they should have reunions and documentaries? 
Well, let me ask you every five years, every ten years, because there, there's a place for reunion shows. There's wrestling. No, yeah, I'm not saying there's not. I mean, there always is a place for but, reunion But ECW shows. abused that. Well, yes, well, this, what do you it, think it, the it, time it, is? I don't know exactly what the time is, but let me ask you this. Of all these defunct promotions, why are we? Why have we not seen a Smoky Mountain DVD? You know, the Rise and Fall of Smoky Mountain. We've only seen one. The uh, I think it was like the Legends of World Class uh, Wrestling. No, they, they made an AWA one too. Yeah, and I, I'm getting that one. You know, they made that. Those are fine, but they made one. Dave, they made one. True. How many ECW DVDs are there? How many? How many World Class Championship Wrestling? Reunion shows have we seen? How many AWA reunion shows have we seen? How many Smoky Mountain? How many uh, U, uh, Universal Wrestling reunion shows have we seen? I mean, how many? There's nothing wrong with doing it. I'm just saying, it, you don't see Vern Gagne, or no, not, not even Vern Gagne. Let's just say somebody who made it big. Let's just I'm gonna pick somebody random out of the AWA. You don't see somebody like Colonel De Beers, you know, jumping up on the internet going. Okay, you know, we're going to have an AWA reunion show, and I'm promoting it here. You know, just kind of go out on his, on his own, on his own, not without the permission of the Ganyas, you know, who, were, who started it and were involved with it. Just going out on his own. You don't see that, but you see that with ECW. You, and, you see, and you don't see these old AWA superstars, you know, that are still, or, you know, still, I'm just saying if they, let's just, okay, let's just mess with time here. Let's mess with the space-time continuum here. And let's just say. Let's just say that let's push, kind of push what happened to AWA a little bit forward to like our period now. I mean, you don't see, you know, people like Marty Jannetty trying to, you know, oh yeah, I was a tag team champion in the AWA. You know, I was a, I was a phenomenal superstar. I'm going to have a reunion show. I'm going to make some, you know, DVD. You don't, you didn't see that, but you see it with ECW. Um, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I think the big reason you see it with ECW more, uh, for two, two reasons. <clears throat> One, ECW was very fan driven. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that has a big part in it. And the second one is, um, I don't want to offend too many people, but ECW had a religious vibe to it where AWA and the other guys, they got paid pretty well for that time period. You know what I'm yeah. saying? ECW guys, I don't want to break kayfabe too much. A lot of them didn't get paid well. A lot of them is we believe in something. We are part of something. So I think the combination of how much the fans built ECW and how important it was is a factor. And also the wrestlers themselves sacrificed so much. I remember Mike Awesome leaving for more money, and that was like a cardinal sin. People went batshit crazy back then. Um, you think I rant hard on Jeff Hardy. If YouTube was out there with Mike Awesome, I love Mike Awesome. I should not use that phrase, but I love all of Mike Awesome. I stopped myself. I was about to say it to death. But, the internet was up and running when ECW, but it wasn't as big. I mean, it was big, but not as compared to now. It, it wasn't. I mean, yeah. YouTube and stuff like that, I mean... I remember but, but, people. But you know what? In, in the internet's defense back in my day, I'm, I'm turning into Cranky Kong. <laughs> turning into Cranky Kong. The internet was cooler back then. There wasn't really trolls that much. There was, you pretty much were more of a nerd than, oh, yeah. you know, well, that's in the beginning, the, the internet that's was the just day. nerd. So you would love passionate have arguments, and it wasn't, like, that insulting and troll-like. You know, now there's, like, so many options, and there's trolls, and there's people, you know. Oh, I miss the old internet. It was like an inner, it was like a Well, dude, it's because it took you three hours to get online. Remember the dial-up? Oh, that part was horrible. And once you finally got on there, hell, you didn't want to piss anybody off. It was like, do you like dogs? Why, yes. Yes, I do like dogs. I have a pet dog myself. Let me tell you about my pet dog. I mean, it was just so cool to be talking to somebody who was clear across the country from you. You know, so I guess maybe that's why. But anyway, I, I think we just need to drop it there. But, you know, speaking of somebody here who has played a big role in, like, Smoky Mountain and wrestling in general, uh, one James E. Cornette. 
old corny man. Got to love the guy, but he's gone on sabbatical from Ring of Honor. I think like the guy, old poor old guy's burnt out. I don't know if you've heard about that now. So they've left all the booking up to Delirious. Uh, I guess the question I'm going to ask you, Dave, is you know hearing about you know one with Jim Cornette being burned out. One, do you think he's coming back? And two, do you think Ring of Honor will be there if he decides to come back? Um, oh, Ring of Honor being there, I I hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope Ring of Honor gets their shiznit together. Um, Delirious it has booked before, and the product was better. And there's a couple things. I don't know why Jim Cornette is awesome. Ring of Honor is awesome. But together, two awesomes did not equal an awesome product. I don't know why. Maybe they're missing something. Granted, Jim Cornette did have the disadvantage of at any time a talent can be plucked. But I think it was more than that. And I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but... I don't know. Just two awesome things did not come out to equal awesome. Awesome plus awesome equal what? You know? <laughs> and um, I think I've been in pro wrestling, and I've been a booker, promoter, and you get burnt out. Um, you, think you, you think you hate the product as a fan? Yeah, be in charge of a fucking indie fed where you have to deal with 60 fucking wrestlers at a time, fans, buildings, and you got to build this fucking storyline. Dude, you get burnt out. Um, I've never told the story before, but yeah, I've been burnt out before, or like fucking big time. Um, ah, fuck it, I'll tell the story. I was gonna say this for a separate video, but <laughs> fucking giant. I will. I'll leave out. I'll kayfabe it. But pretty much every big company we talk about, except the Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is like you're a fucking nerd. Leave us the fuck alone. I hate you. How dare you? But every other big company in America has interviewed me or talked to me about being part of creative. And when I was a little boy, I thought that was my dream. I really thought that was my dream. And they came to me, and I was just burnt the fuck out. And people don't understand, being part of creative, being behind the scenes, is a very stressful fucking job. And mm -hmm. on top of that, it's fucking... I don't know, like... I, I, I'm going to bash Vince Russo, but while I'm bashing him, I'm giving him a compliment. Vince Russo doesn't give a fuck if the product's good. He might fucking pretend it. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck if the product's good. He will be a yes man, kiss ass, do whatever the fuck it takes to keep his job. He doesn't give a fuck if the wrestling is good. He doesn't give a, he doesn't give a fuck. He just adapts and survives. As a fan, as a passionate person, it fucking pisses you off. But as a person, it's like, dude, I'm burnt the fuck out and hate everything. I, I've had opportunities that I've just said no to because I was just so fucking burnt out. And fucking some people just step up and they do it. I The thing is, people, people that are passionate and really love wrestling – they're not going to do good in today's wrestling system. Um, they're going to get a TV guy to be creative, and the TV guy is going to hate it and want to fucking kill himself in about a year. <laughs> That's what now the fucking hiring process goes. The only way you survive is you make something that competes with WWE, and they pay you to go home. And that's not really surviving. That's just kind of an award. It's like, congratulations, Paul Hammond, you pissed us off enough to get paid. Now get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's like your goal, or you just have to become the ultimate ass kisser. But yes, sir, that's a great idea. I think it's fucking wonderful. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I just fucking knew, like, dude, uh, they asked me an honest opinion. They're like, what do you think about the product? And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to shoot from the hip. Yeah, never heard back from them ever again. They're like, thank you. Uh, go do shows on the fucking internet, loser. I'm like, okay, fine. And another time was, dude, they fucking, um, they offered me something, and it was great, and I was just burnt out. And then the thing is, they don't get paid that much. It's really not fucking worth it. 
If you're passionate about wrestling, they're going to fucking kill that. If you're... So I understand being completely burnt out. I understand Jim Cornette being burnt out. But I think that's more of a... Jim Cornette's awesome. Ring of Honor's awesome. We're kind of firing you, but not really because we respect you too much. I think that's what's really going on. But being burnt out, yeah. It, it's fucking beyond stressful. You just get burnt out. You're just like, dude... You know, you have a great fucking storyline, and the day of the show, he's like, I'm not doing that, I quit. You're like, great, great. Or, you know, you have like 20,000, because you need money. Even on the smallest level, you need money. Well, the problem is, you find something called a fucking money mark. I hate calling wrestling fans marks, but I don't mind calling money marks marks, because, well, fucking... The, you know, because we're having a debate over workers, and the only people that are marks and you can work over, really, and in a carny sense of the word, <laughs> is people trying to break in. Yeah, fucking, you go to a fan, like, oh, fuck you! The fan just leaves. The ratings show it. The attendance shows it. So the only people you can still carny or work are people that want to get into the business. But the problem with Money Marks is... They're like, yeah, 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 okay. And then they're like, well, well I just want to be part of the creative. You know, at first, they're like Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter's the ultimate money mark. At first, they're like, I'm just going to stay in the back. You do your thing. Then they're on television. And then they give a speech. And then they want to be part of the creative process. What's wrong with money marks is what's wrong with Dixie Carter. <laughs> you know, come on. But, uh, back in, yeah, I can see being stressed out. But I deep down inside, I think Jim Cornette is being fired with class. Ring of Honor is like, we respect you, but this shit's not working out. And I think even Jim Cornette has to be honest with yourself. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. He's like, oh shit, this ain't working out. You know, like you have storylines that look amazing on paper, and they go in front of a crowd, and <laughs> it just falls apart. Like my big, here, I'll give you an example of mine. My biggest crap fest ever. On paper, I thought it was genius. I was going to have this huge... Our biggest face at the time, Ralph Mosca, go against our biggest mid-card heel, uh, Legion Cage, which w was like our Dolph Ziggler. He's a heel, but people kind of liked him, did it? So what what I did was it was going to be a submissions match, and Ralph was going to grab his valet and try to break her fucking ankle, okay? And people were going to hold Legion Cage back, and fucking he was going to give up because he didn't want to see him hurt his girlfriend. And in my eyes, everyone was going to buy into this. This was going to be great. Like, I, mean, that, I even talked yeah, to other workers. I mean, that sounds good right now. I mean, just Oh, it's, it sounds That's good on good. paper. And I pitched it because like, when you work on the indie level, you pitch ideas. You don't, like, force it on people. You're like, hey, how about this, guys? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they're not in the contract and they are, they're getting paid, but not enough to be fucking, like, you know, not enough to say, yes, sir, yes, sir, like in WWE. All right, so on paper, it was great in my eyes. Like, I'm picturing, like, a Hollywood scene. Dude, it was, it made Vince Russo's fucking booking look amazing. First off, problem one, Ralph Mosca's nine feet tall, and Legion Cage is five feet. So he's four foot taller than him. So the face is like, goddamn, the big show, and the heel is Rey Mysterio. Problem one. Problem two is, fucking in my head, I'm picturing camera views. I'm picturing, like, television. Dude, it's in a fucking dark, shady fucking building, you know? No one knows what the fuck's going on. No one knows why Legion Cage is being held back. No one understands why the face... Like, it was just... I just remember them ringing the bell, the ring announcer having to explain it, like, six times, and the fans just going, like... What the fuck just happened? So, yeah, you get burnt out and you have fucking shit ideas. But on paper, that was an awesome idea. In real life, not so much. But yeah, and then you have people that, oh, it's just a stressful job. And I was pretty much fucking, like, I answered to the money guy and answered to a partner. That's it. So I had two people to answer to, and it was fucking beyond stressful. Mm -hmm. Fucking... WWE, TNA, you have 900 people, and they're like, oh, respect me, respect me, respect me. 
And dude, it's bad. It's just fucking bad. And that's why people like Vince Russo, people are like, oh, how does Vince Russo keep a job? He's awesome at adapting. He's just all, and he doesn't give a shit. Like Jim Cornette, Paul Hammond, Jim Ross. Uh, Jim Ross lasted a pretty long time. But the reason why Jim Ross got fired so many times and these people get fired is because they're passionate. They'll be like, no, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, your boss don't want to hear that shit. They want you to be a television writer, kiss their ass, and that's it. Hey, granted, I never got to the higher levels, but everyone that's ever made it to higher levels says the same thing. Like, uh, the guy who's booking, uh, I don't know, one of the former WWE bookers said, we want wrestling, and now he books TNA. And uh, I don't know if it was either the we want wrestling guy or a guest, but he described the working for WWE and working in pro wrestling and that, is that when you're not the top guy and you're creative, it's like your dad lets you go out and wash the car, but at the end of the day, he's going to rewash it anyway. That's what it's like writing for WWE, TNA, or any federation. And that's it. And it can be very stressful. So I imagine he is burnt the fuck out, and I imagine this is just a classy way to fire them. And I wish more companies did that. So bad props to Ring of Honor. Because they could have been like, oh, we fired Jim Cornette. Fuck him. But they didn't. And I, you know, as a Ring of Honor fan, I appreciate that. Nice class, ROH. Nice class. Yeah, I, you know, I like Jim. I like Jim Cornette. I really do. I like listening to Cornette's commentaries online. So, you know, I, if he hears it, you know, I, ho I hope everything works out for you. I hope uh, you turn everything around, and I hope you're back with Ring of Honor writing storylines. I think you turned out some pretty good stuff in your career. And, you know, best of luck to you. Bottom of my heart, man. I really do. Yeah, plus, right. plus Jim Cornette, get back to your full-time job of shitting on TNA and fucking Vince Russo. All right, so that's your full-time job. If I if I was a, a crazy billionaire or won the lottery, I would literally pay Jim, um, Jim Ross. I would pay Jim Cornette. I'd be like, all right, just take this much money out, pay Jim Cornette. He'd be like, what do I do? Just fucking go online, do interviews. And just shit on TNA, because that's your full-time job. Let's be completely honest. And WWE, too. Fuck it. Just Jim Cornette, be angry. Angry Jim Cornette. That's it. I would I would spend a shitload of money, and I'd call it angryjimcornette.com. And I would just pay him. I'd be like, oh, I don't even care if, if I get my money back. <laughs> just you know, throw money at it. Jim, get on every day and just bitch. Oh, man, that's worth the price of a bitch. God, that'd be the best stress reliever in the world. It would. I would love it. So if I win the lottery, mm. I'm going to hire Jim Cornette for angryjimcornette.com. That's it. All right. Well, or, you know, or, man, dude, we should start a Kickstarter. We're all we that's did. It. That's it. I've never, I never had a good enough idea for Kickstarter. All, all right. right. So in the comments, would you donate money to Kickstarter so we give all the money to Jim Cornette? We'd buy, well, no, we'd buy domain name, buy server space, and every penny would go to Jim Cornette. And just every day, Jim Cornette just wakes up and bitches about wrestling. Just gets on a webcam, and there you go. That's awesome. I have my Kickstarter idea. And, you know, we don't, we don't even have to fucking earn make income. That's what the internet used to be about. Or when the internet was about awesome ideas and be like, oh, we'll worry about, we'll maybe worry about money later on. Those were the good days. Like, you know, Facebook, Google, all these big companies, when they first started, never cared about income. They were just out to be awesome. You know, someone had to make a Google. Someone had to make a Facebook. Fuck making money. Let's just make it awesome. That's I'm having that feeling. I'm having a social network feeling right now with you. Google. Oh, I love it. Okay, so down in the comment sections, we need you to send us your pledges. Don't send it. Well, you can send us actual cash, but I don't have no promises where that's going to uh, go. We got to make Kickstarter. The only thing is, we got to make sure Jim Cornette's on board. Well, right, maybe well, we should start a little army, then convince him of okay. the idea. Okay, first of all, let's see if we can get it financially. Down in the comment section is pledge money, and we're going to start angryjimcornette.com. We'll get space. We'll, we'll set up a site, and we'll pay money, pay money to Jim Cornette to get on his webcam and every day just bitch about something, particularly in wrestling. But he can bitch about other things. But bitch he about has wrestling. to be angry, though. That's the key. Yes, he has to be angry. He can he fake it a little bit. Like, if he to. goes on there and he's like, well, you know, fucking Gaddafi, that's an interesting topic. <laughs> No, just come out screaming, going crazy, being angry. 
Yeah, because like a lot of the old Wrestle AM and Wrestle Night people that watch this show are kind of mad because I'm not as angry as I used to be. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm pretty fucking intense. I didn't know I was angrier. I guess back in the day I was angrier. I'm sorry I did not bring my anger to the highest level. But anyway, Jim Cornette, angryjimcornette.com. It probably someone owns the domain now. We've already said it 800 times. Uh, I know. So, you know, so, so if somebody hasn't stolen it by then, look, this is the internet. No, no, no. Oh. This is the thing. I don't even care if you stole it. Just make it a reality. Like, if we're yeah. not the head of it, if PW Torch or Pro Wrestling Insider or uh, PWR or, I don't know, anyone, if these people just go and make it happen, I'm okay with that. I'm tired of the internet being so competitive. All mm -hmm. right? We have awesome ideas. If you spearhead this awesome idea, that's okay. We don't yeah. have to be in charge. Matter of fact, if Angry Jim Cornette pops up tomorrow, I'll call it an internet miracle. Thank you, Santa yeah. Claus. <laughs> Thank you. So if you're online and you're like an internet troll, see if you can get this video to James Cornette and just tell him boom, boom, and Dave here. Make sure he fast forwards, yeah. though, because we can't... Yeah, oh, yeah, it. yeah. So definitely tell him to fast forward. forward. I, would, yeah. I would hate to... Jim Cornette, he's got shit to do. Oh, I know. If he had to watch our bullshit, oh, my God. I think he'd, get, he'd waste like five years of his life he couldn't get back. I don't know why, like, you know, I used to do radio, I used to talk in front of hundreds and thousands of people, I used to do television, never got a little bit nervous. I was legit kind of nervous, I'm like, whoa, whoa, Jim Cornette might be watching our show? Oh my god, I used to do drive time in Tampa. <laughs> I, used to, I used to have a morning show on, like, tons of, you know, not tons of networks, but a couple networks. But I used to, like, you know, have thousands and thousands of people listen to me. Never really got nervous. I'm like, I'm a fat jerk-off. But, like, you're like, Jim Cornette might watch the video. I'm like, oh, I should be wearing a suit. <laughs> I should lose weight. I can't, I can't let Jim Cornette see me like this. Anyway, I think I just admitted I had a man crush on Jim Cornette. Yes, yes, you did. All right, so someone, someone who has more Internet influence than us. Let's get together. Dave Meltzer, I'm looking at you. What have you done lately? Actually, you've done a lot. Congratulations. <laughs> but still, <laughs> one more thing to your resume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we're the biggest fucking nerds ever. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to go to comment time, or do you want to talk? Oh, and the... Oh, the drive this bus. Come on, drive the bus, you son of a gun. All right. Look, it's, get, it's December already. We're going to go ahead and put out the words now. We're going to go ahead and start taking nominations, so put them in the comment section. We're going to do some end-of-the-year awards for, you know, of course, 2012. We're looking, of course, the normal stuff like, uh, you know, Wrestler of the Year, Tag Team of the Year, Worst Angle slash Storyline of the Year, uh, Most Improved Wrestler of the Year, stuff like that. So if you've got any nominations, any suggestions, just put them down in the comments, and we're going to do this thing the entire month of December, and at the very end, we're actually going to hand out uh, what are we going to call them? The Cocos? Well, uh, no, we, no, what we do, we used to have a name for every award, and we used to have a name for the awards. So we're going to go back on YouTube, because we have one award show uploaded on YouTube. It was one of the few things we didn't lose on the move. And we're going to actually write down all the awards, so maybe a show in the future. But if you have an idea, like we have, I know we have like the Miz Award, which is the most improved. We mm -hmm. actually named the awards after people. So, we'll have to check it out. There's there's the Hardy. I think it was Jeff Hardy or Matt Hardy. It's the... I th maybe it's just the Hardy Award. But it I think was, it was the Hardy Award. It was, he's over with the fans, but we hate him. And over... I hate... I, I, I always forget that people don't know the terminology. I think I might want to do a show where I just do terminology. No, that, that show will bomb. Of course it will bomb, but then we can reference it. Like, well, what does over mean? Like, go here. Like, a, a wrestle dictionary. Because I'm arguing on what worker really means and not mean on YouTube. But anyway, my battle will continue. So, nominations for our awards here, whatever. All right, let's go to the comments. Let's all go to the comments. Let's all go to the comments. All right, does that all mean right. I'm driving the bus? No, I'm driving the bus on this one. I right. got, I've got two here. The first one comes, of course, surprise, surprise, the original YouTube commenter, Stairway to Zeppelin. God bless you, sir. His question is, <clears throat> do you think 
that the unstoppable monster character is is better and more effective story, more a more effective story when played as a heel than a face. Ah, that's a, that's a really good question. That is good. Um, I don't, the way WWE and even a little bit TNA, because TNA has been do switching around with creative. They, the original Abyss, how they originally handled Abyss, was really good. Uh, but the way WWE books monsters is horrible. It's just fucking storyline wise. Um, yeah, and I'm not saying storyline wise, wrestling wise. I'm like the art of storytelling. The art that WWE is so bad at booking a monster that people who love the art of storytelling fucking cry. <laughs> like it's just like what? What? Why? Why would they do this? So uh, WWE is, ho and you think because they built their company around monsters, Hulk Hogan, John Cena. You know they always had that monster type guy, a monster not like Frankenstein, but just almost Superman like. Yeah, just blow it up. yeah. Yeah. So because Ryback, because a lot of people like the monster heel. Um, I don't know. I hate. This is my booking philosophy, mm -hmm. and not everyone agrees with this. I think. You should have four stars, four guys. Um, we'll use WB guys. Um, I'm just gonna pull them out of my hat just for the sake of keeping the conversation rolling because I don't want to actually think. Uh, Randy Orton, Big Show, John Cena, CM Punk, and these four guys should not feud. They should never feud except for emergencies. You build up these monsters, like throwing Ryback and CM Punk together so fast, so bad. And you build it up to a WrestleMania. You build it up to big events. And the mid-carters barely ever touch these monsters. But if they do, they're the ones who challenge the monster. Because WWE squashes too many mid-carters. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Like, um... You have, you know, you have, let's just take Ryback. You have Ryback beat jobbers, local guys, and very, very low mid-card guys. You don't have them beat up the tag team division, because WB obviously thinks the tag team division means jobbers. You don't have them beat up mid-carders. Um, Miz wasn't bad booking at the time, but that should have been on pay-per-view. And you build it up slowly, and then you have it there. Because the problem with WWE is, if you're a top guy, you're super strong and beat everybody. But they fuck everyone else. So I think as far as invincibility, faces are good if they're over. But it takes so much fucking work. Um, Goldberg was... I'm, I'm using this... It was just a miracle. Goldberg was a booking, had it, everything came together. It's very odd for Goldberg to happen. Where people like Ryback, you have to fucking build. You have to shove it down the throat over, 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 over. A monster face is way harder to book. Um, and then eventually people are going to turn on him, so you're going to have to make him heal anyway. A monster heal? No, that's better. But then again, like Abyss, Abyss was a, a bit, I shit on TNA a lot. This is old school TNA. The Abyss character was done right. He had his feud with Raven. He came out. He was a monster. Uh, the original Abyss storyline was probably one of the best monster storylines in America in a long time. And he, I don't think it was a heel or a face. He was just a monster. So, I think that's it, you know. It, it, and I shit on TNA a lot, but the ultimate monster booking would be the original Miss. Did they shit that out? <laughs> oh, my God, did they ever. Uh, they fucked it up. But the original Miss storyline, I know all you TNA defenders are like, I fucking love TNA. What do you mean there was $10 pay-per-views? I'm so disappointed in TNA fans sometimes. Oh, yeah. But the original Abyss storyline is the perfect way to book a monster. 
He didn't go up to fight Jeff Jarrett or AJ Styles. He had a mid-court feud, and he was invincible. Nice. And then when Abyss really did get those title shots, it was like, oh, shit, how is Jeff Jarrett going to keep the title? I, I imagine that's the champion. I've been punched a hell of a lot. But mm -hmm. I'm, like, guesstimating when the champions were. But they didn't push him right to the moon. And they didn't push him as a face or a heel. The fans just fell in love with him. He was just a monster. Where Ryback, because the WWE always does this, they think business, marketing, they have to get him over. They have to. And it's cool because they didn't give up on him. They give up on a lot of these projects and it makes their company look worse. So they're riding it out with Ryback, which I respect. But really, if he beats CM Punk... You're losing the internet type fans, and if he loses, no, if he loses, if he beats CM Punk, you lose the internet fans, and if he beats CM Punk, you lose the casual fan. Well, the problem is, you could have built that up to WrestleMania, where the internet fans and the casual fans got together and went, "Holy shit, what's going to happen?" Ryback and CM Punk does not have that feeling, but it should. Don't you agree? That feud should have been dragged out and had that feeling more. I don't think. Well, I'm not necessarily opposed to them doing the initial match at Hell in a Cell and then trying to build Ryback back, back up to you know take on CM Punk again in a rematch. I think that's the way they should have done it. But instead, they've drugged this feud out three more months than what they should have. See, me and Boo, <laughs> we we agree to disagree. I say they should have dragged that shit out forever. Boo was like, this shit should be over with. Oh, but I, we both yeah. agree it sucks. I mean, <laughs> we agree it sucks, and, you know, yeah, they could have built him up. They could have done a whole different, better job, and I think if John Cena had not gotten hurt, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. But, but it happened. WWE panicked. They put Ryback in the top spot, and now, oh, shit, what do we do now? That's exactly what creatives think. Okay, now, well, we got to do something here. We can't kill him off, but we can't have him win the belt either. So now they've put him in a – you know, we said it was a lose-lose situation from the get-go. And now they've dug a hole, and now they're just gonna, now creative is continuing to dig. But uh, to an my answer to Stairway to Zeppelin's question is, uh, you can do them both. I personally think maybe the heel's a little bit better, but I think you can do it both hate, uh, face and heel. The perfect example of how you build up a monster face is, I, I believe Dave has already mentioned it, but Goldberg. You had him start out with small guys. He was, you know, he got a surprise win on. Uh, Nitro, he beat, uh, yeah, he beat, yeah, Bill DeMott, humorous. Okay, okay, well, that was a bit of a shocker. Then they had him you know, just beat up some jobbers, okay. Then it got a little bit bigger. Then he started fighting a little bit bigger guys and a little bit bigger guys and a little bit more popular guys, a little bit more popular, and, and eventually built up to and he got the streak going, and there was interest. And then when he started putting, you know, then when he wasn't squashing people like Chavo Guerrero, and they start putting him up against people like, you know, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Hulk Hogan, and then it's, oh, wow, well, you know, does he have enough to beat those guys? Is he, You know, can he beat those guys? Can he keep the streak going? There's the mystique is, you know, the competition's getting a little bit better and a little bit better every time, and maybe, you know, Goldberg's struggling just a little bit more to beat these guys. It's like, oh, God, can he beat this next guy? This guy's even bigger and better than the guy before him. Uh, and a perfect example of how you build up a monster heel, uh, the very, very ever first run of The Undertaker. He would. He came in. He didn't say anything. He was just dark, gloomy. He was just this an intimidating guy, and did not sell any moves. Like you'd squash him, boom, he would sit right back up. And then all of a sudden it became, well, we keep throwing these guys at him. They keep hitting him with everything they got. He just keeps getting back up. We can't stop him. You know. And this just who can stop this guy? Uh, they did that with Taz and ECW. He was suplexing oh, everybody and choking oh, everybody. Taz out. plus ten. Taz was booked excellently. Paul Heyman is a genius. Oh, yeah. and I, Okay, I remember one time Taz beat Rob Van Dam. And the big hype around it was Rob Van Dam came the closest to anybody to beating Taz. That was the hype. Oh, my God. Rob Van Dam almost beat Taz. You know, and that was that was all the hype. So I think it can be done. You just got to do it correctly. I personally think there's a lot more money to be made with the uh, with the with the heel, because it's oh my god who can stop this? Which one of our heroes can finally put the guy down? And when they do, oh my god, there's a huge payoff. 
Everybody, you know, they find it's like the end of Rocky. Everybody's fucking crying. We did it, yo, Adrian. Awesome. But when you do that with the with the uh, with the face, there's a lot of money in the buildup in the streak. But once that streak is in it, and it is again by evidence by Goldberg, nobody cares anymore. The streak's been snapped. Who cares? And I just want to I just want to say something that Bobby DeBrain here once said. If he was running WCW, he would have never lost. He would have never let Bill Goldberg lose. He would have just won forever. And I kind of wonder that how much more money they would have made if he just never mm -hmm. lost. Because people were going batshit crazy for Goldberg. All right, you got any more comments, or do you want me to go down the list? I got one more question here. This is from All Mark right. Farr. I believe this. I believe actually this is uh, Ewok. I believe, but Mark yeah, Farr. Yeah, Ewok. Try try yeah. not to use last names because you know people might have real jobs. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I, I Google, Google. I know it sounds crazy, but Google. I use my real name on everything, mm -hmm. but um, Google is like really obsessed with learning people's first and last names. But like, let's say Mark here, Mr. Ewok. Yeah, we'll just say Mr. Ewok. So. Is is going for a job interview, and you know, they're yeah. like, oh, you're a wrestling fan. Fuck off. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I just think. Okay, 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 okay. You know, you know take two, take two. <laughs> All well, right. I'll edit uh, it out in post. No. It yes. Our, uh, uh, this guy, Ewok, he wants to know, uh, he has the question, Dave, can you see Brad Maddox join the Renegades of the Shield? Yeah, I could. Maybe as like a mouthpiece. I, I could, I don't know, because they also have, oh, I could see it happening. I don't see what the benefit of the Shield is, but I see the benefit for him. He gets to come back and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I, I I see I you know I'm just picturing here. Maddox has everything to gain by joining the Shield. What does the Shield have to gain? You know, so it'd be kind of interesting. Plus, you don't want to NWO this shit. Like if you had maybe five max for the Shield, then yeah, I'm okay with that. But the more people you add, you don't want to ruin it. You know, mm -hmm. so. I don't know. I could see him joining it. I could see why, storyline-wise, why Maddox would want to join. He's fucking unemployed. But why would the Shield need him or want him? They got a good thing going. So I could see it. I could see it every. But as far as a fan, let's get out of storyline mode. And as a fan, I'm okay with him joining as a fan. But like I said, don't NWO this shit. Virgil mm -hmm. better not be joining the Shield anytime soon. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Go right. to NWO this shit. All right, all right. I'm just going to go down. Mm -hmm. uh, Abdul thinks we're stupid fat clowns. I know yes. what? I always, I love trolls, but the thing I get with trolls is, yeah, we're stupid fat clowns, but you are watching us. I can understand if we were on your favorite radio station. I can understand if we're on your favorite TV network, but we're on YouTube and Google+. Plus. If you don't like us, you can move along. There's so many options out there. So, we're stupid fat clowns. Anyway, and we kind of knew that. Like, I, but Boo, 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 Boo tries to defend himself. He's like, I'm not fat. I'm, I'm big boned or whatever. Dude, not me. I was like, dude, I'm just fat. Yeah. <laughs> I got no fucking excuse. Just roll with it. All right. Um, go, going just in order that YouTube puts them, so it might okay. repeat and all that. Who is the leader of the S.H.I.E.L.D.? I only agree with Zeppelin about Joker character. Oh, okay. I apologize for putting you guys in the same boat. I love you both. I shouldn't have done that. I know your difference. I feel like I'm talking to my kids. Like, if I, lo if I lost Ewok or Zeppelin, I would be sad. Because pretty much comment question time would be nothing. Yes. Um, I enjoyed the match with Regal. Ambrose is a lot different than what the WWE has on the roster at the moment. He's going to head fuck a lot of people. And I like that. Uh, can you see? We already answered that one. Right, this one's kind of interesting because, you know, last week, you know, people on the Internet went after your boyfriend. This week, they went after my man crush, not named Jim Cornette. Um, this is also from Mr. Ewok. I watch other WWE TNA review shows. You're cheating on us! No! Oh. <laughs> I take this. All right, I'm retarded. And one debate I saw was about CM Punk being no more than an overhyped mid-card wrestler. And I've heard this debate. I really mm -hmm. like him being champ and think he's been a saver to WWE. 
I, I agree with you. But are the WWE making him so predictable that people just become bored of him? His reign as champion can't last much longer, but it seems impressive apart from the last two pay-per-views. Let's hope TLC in a few weeks will change the way he wins matches for straight victories. I agree with everything he says. I'm going to hit this by segment by segment. Um, if you like big men wrestling and bigger than life wrestlers and you say he's overhyped mid Carter, um, then we just have different views of wrestling. I can accept that answer. You know, if you're like, oh, I really love the big show, Hogan, Warrior, I, we're, we're just two different types of wrestling fans, and I can accept you not liking CM Punk and saying, oh, he's just a mid-carder, fuck him. But if you like Shawn Michaels, if you like Austin Aries, and you're saying that, you're kind of just a hater. The guy does everything amazing. The only thing he's lacking in my opinion, and I'm a nut hugger, so there's a pre warning. The only thing he's lacking is size. And there are fans like that. The bigger the wrestlers, the better. Uh, WWE made lots of money off that. I think times have changed. But if you're that type of fan, we're just going to argue till we die. But if you're like, oh, he's just a mid Carter and Austin Marys is awesome, you're just fucking lying to yourself and you're a hater. So it really depends on why you hate CM Punk. I can, you know what I mean? Um, uh, we're, uh, is WWE making it predictable? I agree with that. Um, WWE is really booking him bad. I did root for him to get 365. I did. I thought that was an awesome story. I, I, I'm glad he got it as a fan. But now he's kind of in limbo until The Rock comes back. And he is boring because, well, Cena's hurt, and we've seen that. We've seen that. And Ryback was pushed to the top, but we kind of don't care. You know, the internet fans want CM Punk to win. The casual fans want Ryback to win. But together, it's just not good. Um, so, yeah, I think he's become predictable and boring because, I don't know. I don't know if I blame him as much as I blame creative. But that might just be me being a nut hugger. Boom, boom, you're not as big of a nut hugger as CM Punk. What do you think about my view of him being predictable and boring as more of a booking situation than an actual CM well, Punk situation? Am I wrong? What's your thoughts? Uh, I, I think the problem is right now he's in a routine, and I think generally speaking the wrestling community as a whole hates long title runs because it's just... Not okay. this guy. You know I, know, I know you're not, but then again, that's why nobody likes you. Um, <laughs> generally speaking, people don't like long title runs. They want to actually believe that the title could change hands at any moment. They like the fact that, okay, well, this air is going to come to an end. But now what, what's happened is Punk has got the belt, and he's going to have it until the Royal, at least the Royal Rumble. I mean, face it, it's going to happen. And now it's just, okay, well, what are they going to do to fill time until the Royal Rumble? Oh, okay, Ryback. Again, I've already seen this match. Why do I care? He's already beaten him. And it's, well, who else are they going to throw against him? Okay, well, how's Punk going to weasel out of it this time? There's none of this, oh, the title's in jeopardy. Punk may dro actually drop it. It's not like when he took on scene about, what, three months ago. And it's like thinking, okay, well, he's going to be, oh, no, he got out on the screw job. This is an injustice. He'll get him next time. Now it's, okay, how many times can he beat Ryback? Oh, who's going to challenge him this week? Oh, yeah, this is so exciting. How's he going to weasel out of it? You know, I think that's I think that's what it is. And I'm not necessarily saying it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying that's what I believe a lot of the internet wrestling community believes. Because if it's somebody you like, like we do, like we like Punk, this is awesome. But if it's somebody like John Cena or JBL or somebody what? that we just... I love JBL's title run. Not so fast, my fellow friend. JBL and Jeff Jarrett and Triple H's heel title runs... Ah, beautiful. Triple H's uh, heel title run? Yeah, oh, I loved it. No, 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 I, lo I loved it for a different reason. I know he abused his power. I know he wasn't as good as he was booked to be. I know there was shenanigans, politics. But this is why I loved his title run. It was anything that he did. If you go after a pay-per-view... You go and you go. You go to internet sites. You go to forums. You go to YouTube, 
And people were like, eh, it sucked. It was awesome. It's better than the other guy. Those are your responses. But when Triple H won a pay-per-view match, the internet blew the fuck up. Like, I just remember, like, I was like a little schoolboy on fucking Christmas morning. I was like, oh, shit, Triple H just won again. Man, if fucking, uh, he just won again over a better guy, more talented guy, pushed to the moon. Um, you know, he wanted cheap. And I just went to the internet like this. <laughs> I can't wait to see the internet explode. I'm like the Joker like that. I just want to see the fucking world burn. And tr Triple H's title run gave me that. I just remember, like, one time we were at the wing house. And Triple H, I think, was going against Goldberg. I could be wrong. But it was a hell in a cell. And in Florida, you know, there's storms. so the power goes out. And Triple H is beaten every which fucking way possible. Everyone's like, this is the night. And Wing House gets pretty packed in the Tampa area. It's like a Hooters. It's kind of a local Hooters. And we're going fucking crazy. And there's something magical about it when everyone buys in. And everyone's like, Goldberg's going to beat him. Fuck Triple H. It's over. Power goes out. The power goes out for maybe, I kid you not, two minutes. It's the shortest power outage ever. It comes back on, the pay-per-view's over. Everyone's freaking the fuck out. What happened? And this is maybe prior before smartphones were out of control. <laughs> he picks up the bartender, picks up the phone, calls another wing house that had power, and says Triple H won. I kid you not, the place fucking erupted with pure fucking hatred. I, if hell exists, it was in that wing house at that very moment. People were throwing food, people were ripping posters, the wing house security was on top alert. People were leaving like, Fuck this, I'm never watching this bullshit again. And me and my friends are in the corner like, <laughs> Yes, hell on earth, Triple H! Hell on earth! So, that's why I love heel title runs. Uh, that's why I love Jeff Jarrett, JBL, Triple H. And it's not because do they deserve those long title runs. I love the fact that it brings out so much hatred and passion when they won. Dude, you know, I hate Jeff Hardy, but not everyone hates Jeff Hardy. So, you know, when I get upset, I'm like the only fucking idiot. Everyone's like, no, look at that guy over there. He's fucking crazy. He's so mad. But when Triple H, Jeff Jarrett, those two, JBL a little bit, but Triple H, Jeff Jarrett, oh, God, it was magical. It was fucking magical. And I just remember going, <laughs> <laughs> and it just going, there would be so much fucking people were passionate about back then. But now I don't think people are that passionate, you know? I don't think I can't see someone tearing up a restaurant over a wrestling result anymore. And that's kind of sad. And I think that's what great heels do. So a lot of people fucking shit on Triple H because he banged Stephanie and played the game to get to the top. See what I did there? And <laughs> But, dude, when he was abusing his power, God, did people hate him. And it was awesome. So, yeah, long heel title run. I love long title runs. That's it. That's it. I said it. Dude, I love title runs so much, and I mentioned this in old shows, but I'll mention it again. I love title runs so much that when I ran federations, wrestlers came to me saying, it's time. Wrestlers came to me and begged. You know, like a uh, sideshow. Or at the IPW reunion show this weekend, OG Scarface. Uh, very popular, biggest star-wise in our local area and for our company. Literally begged to put the belt on Bruce Santé. And we're on the phone. He's like, dude, I, let's give the title to Bruce Santé. I'm like, what are you talking about? We have another seven years. Like, dude, I booked title champions so fucking long that if you were a mid-carder, you're like, oh, fuck. You know, but no, no. Fucking, if the title means something, you should have it. Like, if the title, the lesser titles, yeah, you could pass it around. But the title should mean something. You know, FIP, Homicide, Ring of Honor, Samoa Joe, Triple A. Yeah, long title runs, baby. 
That's what it's about. Oh, I just had a mark out moment. But yeah, yeah, dude, that wing house was hell on earth. Dude, they had to call security. Their cops were called in. And here's the fucked up part. No one was fighting. They were just so upset that they were throwing food. Like, it wasn't like a Triple H fan's like, ah No, it wasn't like, you know, the Kato fight this weekend where fucking New York went crazy, beat the shit out of each other over a boxing result. It wasn't like that at all. It was literally, let's just break shit. Let's not even hurt each other. It was, it was, we hate Triple H, and no one likes Triple H. Let's wreck the fucking place. <laughs> it was awesome. So, yeah, I love those long title runs. Anyway, uh, James Legend. Oh, James Legend. Mr. I'm going to be on this show. Thank you for Never. leaving the comments. Um, he, I, I didn't know what he was talking about, but then he told me. Um, I'm hoping I um, give TNA three decent shows, TNA Challenge, blah blah blah, earlier in the show. And I said one thing that will upset me, TNA, and I'll go crazy nuts and rip up my wing house <laughs> is that um, uh, Christopher Daniels has to beat AJ Styles. Just the story, the fucking heel. I know faces always win in wrestling, and that's what he says. He says. He says, um, heels don't win feuds, Dave. And that fucking just makes me angry. It just makes me angry. Because he's absolutely right. But at the same time, I fucking hate it. And my response was, didn't Wreck-It Ralph teach you anything? Christopher Daniels has to win. This is the fan of me speaking. Has to win this match on pay-per-view. He's not going to. But he has to. <laughs> he just has to. It's like voting third party in America. You're passionate and you want it to happen, but you just know it's not. All right. Uh, math problem solvable says, great video. Keep up the work. Thank you, pal. Uh, <laughs> SSS0037SSS. I don't think that's his birth name, so I don't mind reading no, his name. I don't think it is. Dude, this guy is just the uh, definition of troll. And he's like, you guys suck. And like, dude, okay. Maybe we do suck, but, like, Maybe. you don't think we know that? Boom Boom works in media. The thing is, when you work in media and radio, you have, you are very humbled, and you know your position on the pecking order. You know, you know, especially when you're older, not when you're young. When you're young and stupid, yeah. you don't know. You're like, I'm going to be the next Jim Rome. But you kind of know. Like, I know how good and how bad I am. That's why I got out of radio. I got to the highest of well, my ability that I could. And then I was like, you know what? This ain't even fucking fun anymore. So there's levels. Of course we know we suck. We're on fucking Google Plus, asshole. Of course we know. We used to be on the radio. And then you're ugly. And of course we know. Actually, I could pinpoint to the time I knew I was ugly. I never knew, and I told this story before, so I apologize if I'm telling you. I'm going to give you a fast forward. I never knew I was ugly because I could talk, and I had a personality, and I had no money. But I still got girls. So, if you, you know, you have no money, but you can still get girls. In your head as a teenager, you're under the illusion you're good looking. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. You're, you're not rich, and you can get girls. So you think, because you don't really think of personality, talking, saying what women want to hear. You don't put that into a factor as a teen. So when I joined the military, I assumed I was good looking. And, you know, in a boot camp, they say, oh, you're ugly. But you're like, ah, you don't mean that drill sergeant. You don't mean that staff sergeant. You know, you don't mean that Mr. Drill Instructor. I know you're just doing your job. I know I'm good looking. But I can tell you, when, when we, went, we went to fucking Okinawa, we were training. And there was an ugly guy, and I love him to death, so I won't use his name. We'll call him Wario. We love, I always use Mario characters when I do it. I love him to death. But I would make fun of him. I'd be like, you're the ugliest motherfucker ever, you fucking ugly piece of shit, because that's how Marines are nice to each other. So, one day we're training, and he goes up, does this thing, and fucking comes down, and someone calls me Wario. I'm like, I'm not Wario. He's like, yeah, you were just fucking here, Wario. I'm like, no, fucking Wario is the ugly fucker. Oh my god, I'm ugly! Me and Wario look exactly the same! <laughs> and I'm really glad I learned that lesson because SSS0037SSS says when you're ugly, 
I'm like, well, yeah, I know that. I fucking grasp it, you know, it's once you know yourself. So thanks to the Marine Corps and Wario for being ugly, that I learned that I'm ugly. And then it, like, it confused me. I was like, I always get girls way out of my league. What am I doing? And you know what? Being a nice guy and being able to talk really works. You'll be surprised. Try it out there, SS0037SSS. Ah, you're just fucking trying to be a fucking troll, but nah. Then he goes on. He says, Elizabeth, New Jersey sucks. Oh, Elizabeth. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska sucks. Elizabeth, New Jersey rules. I'm from New Jersey, so you're kind of messing up the trolling action. And Boom Boom's actually from Alabama. So now you're just trolling the city of Omaha. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and he says he has real wrestling fans on his Facebook. Go find them. That's, that's a weird troll. To which I replied, well, good for you. Ewok thinks we should dress like clowns. Uh, no, no, because that would be, no, no, no. That's not going to happen. And here's here's why, because we'd have to spend money. To get, we would have to spend money to get the clown costumes, or at least spend money to get the clown makeup, and that would imply that we have a budget for this show. Yeah, no, no. I'm just ugly. I don't know if I could dress as a clown. But dude, in college, I wasn't a movie. I never. I'm a movie star. I forgot to tell you this. Oh. I I fucking. I don't know why it was this most ridiculous fucking movie ever. I don't even know the title. I gotta find out, but I don't even know where the guy is. He made this movie. It was an artsy fartsy movie. It made no fucking sense whatsoever. But he's like, dude, I need actors. And I'm like, you know what? You're a pretty fucking cool weird guy. I'm a pretty cool weird guy. I'll be your actor. He said, all right, just dress up like a clown and wear a clown mask. And we go in and the I think chicken fillet. Yes, it was chicken fillet. Maybe this is oh, when they were. Yeah. Maybe this is why they're anti um, boys holding hands. But anyway, they gave us permission to make this college film, but he didn't give any details whatsoever. So I just go in and I'm like, "Hey, little kids!" And I'm in this clown and I'm juggling, and then someone shoots me and I splat ketchup all over. And then for like. He was very artsy fartsy, so I had to act dead for like 45 minutes. Maybe this was a fetish of his. I never really asked. But I laid on the ground for like 45 minutes just covered in ketchup, dressed as a clown. And then the chicken filet people are like, dude, we gave him permission. But what the fuck are we going to do, you know? So chicken filet people are losing their fucking mind. So if you can't record movies in chicken filet anymore, it's thanks to us and our movie. <laughs> And I never took off my mask, and I never put, put my fucking name on the credits, but it's a real fucking movie. Like, you can get on DVD and shit. But, but, fucking, like, it's time to clean up. And everyone and their mother is just like, what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? It's completely weird. Because when you shoot a movie, it's, like, in such segments that you don't know what's going on. So you just see a blood daddy clown by ordering your chicken filet sandwich. So we're... <laughs> And why the fuck am I telling this story? I don't even know what this connects to. What about clowns? Oh, yeah, that's how. It, you're the one that brought up clowns. Anyway, so fucking I'm dressed up as a clown, but now I'm beyond embarrassed, and I'm not taking off the fucking mask. And they're cleaning up, and they're like, I'm just sitting there eating chicken nuggets in a clown mask. And they're like, ain't you going to help clean up? And I'm like, dude, I'm dressed as a fucking clown. I refuse to clean up. And everyone that was there was like, I've never heard a better point made in my life. And the worst part is, I don't get embarrassed easy, but dude, we were there for like an hour. They're calling the cops, they're not sure, we have permission, it's beyond fucking awkward. Uh, we made Ooh. We Are Ch we made we are Changed look com like a welcome party. But, we fucking finally leave, and I never took the clown mask off. Never. I'm like, yeah, fuck that, dude. We were like ten minutes down the road, I'm like, alright. All right, someone's buying me some fucking Subway or something. I do have yeah. one clown story. You got a clown story? All right, fucking yeah, Clown I, I, AM. Let's go. Clown, welcome to Clown AM. Go. It was, uh, I think it was either 2006 or 2007. I think it was 2000. Yeah, it was 2007. Um, we had a, I had a Halloween party at college, and I wanted to come up with a scary costume so what I did was, <laughs> I went to Walmart and I bought one of those like generic clown outfits that they were selling for like not even twenty bucks. <laughs> and then I got some fake, you know, that's stage blood, you know, they have in the packets. And I took the 
fake blood, and I splattered it all over this clown suit. <laughs> and then I put on the clown suit, and I did makeup. Uh, did clown makeup, but I did it in the style of uh, Pogo the Clown, which, of course, was worn by John, serial killer John Wayne Gacy. So here I am in John Wayne Gacy's clown makeup. But, but it's Halloween, a, right? Exactly. We're in dude, a bloody my shit was like in July. My shit was like in July, dude. I'm wearing a bloody clown suit with John Wayne Gacy gay, clown makeup running around his Halloween party. I legitimately scared the shit out of people. <laughs> oh, Halloween can be so much fun. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get back to wrestling here. All right, let's wrap this Clown bad boy AM has come to a close. If you'd like a sequel to Clown AM, please. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> probably, that's probably all my clown stories. I'll read Stephen King's It next time. <laughs> um, I'd love to ask... Right, this is from Ewok, so we're back to wrestling. I'd love to ask Vince whether he would want a strong mid-card or strong champ, because we brought that up last show. He would probably say a strong champ as a strong mid-card would cost more money. Ooh, nice. Nice way of mm -hmm. thinking. Ewok, he is a greedy son of a bitch. However, I would go with a strong mid-card as you enjoy the next champ... The next champ winning the belt more in the future. Fingers crossed, WWE. So, um, what we brought up, we asked last last show to leave comments was, I did, WWE and TNA the last month have kind of been even in my eye. Well, maybe TNA a little better this month, and I hate TNA, so that's saying a lot about WWE's product. But um, WWE has CM Punk, which I'm a huge fan of. But their undercard, besides Ziggler, kind of sucks. And then TNA has Jeff Hardy as the champ, who I fucking despise. And wish... Okay, I won't say what I wish. Maybe that TNA will sit and be like, You threatened our talent! <laughs> fucking TNA. Anyway, but they have an awesome undercard. So which one would you rather have? Boom Boom answered, you'd rather have champion. Uh, I'd like Vince to know, um, but yeah, I could see if Jeff Hardy loses to Austin Aries or, fuck, what member of Beer Money is he feuding with? Fuck, fuck, fuck. I slipped the bottom of my head. But yeah, if anyone, any member of Beer Money, any member, anyone but AJ Styles. AJ Styles, I'm just starting to fucking hate on. I, I, I love AJ and I think he's talented and I've been a huge fan for him forever. But there's something missing. So anyway, so that's the question. We'll continue it on this thing. All right, um, Troll is back. Troll 37 is back. Manga Comics, Dragon Ball, Pokemon are all trash. Okay, well, thank you for your opinion. Um, I agree, TNA sucks. I don't watch it. I tried, but couldn't get through the show. I hated it. Whoa, a troll actually mentioning something about the fucking show. Way to go, uh, DC is better than Mar. That's it. There's trolling. You can say I suck. You can say that I am fucking fat. Both of these things could be proven in court and could be facts. That's not a problem. But saying DC is better than Marvel? You know what? I'm going to troll the troll. Go fuck your mother. <laughs> All right? Oh. There's no fucking way... DC is better than Marvel Comics. You got me, troll. You got me. I tried to ignore you. I tried to go about. But fuck you. Fuck you. The fucking fuck you, Spider. How dare you? Now, if you say Batman's pretty good, oh, I'll give you that. Batman is pretty fancy dancy. But Marvel. No. Troll, you're not going to win. Marvel's way better. We all know that. How fucking dare you? How dare you, sir? There's some things. You can fucking argue with me on religion. You can argue with me about politics. You can even argue about me about the word worker. You can even argue with me about anything. But Marvel vs. DC, you've gone too far, troll. You have gone too far. Anyway, Stairway to Zeppelin's going to bring us back to wrestling and normal. I think that's the last troll one. There's too much. We should call it Troll AM. I'm actually fucking like, at first it was fake angry, that turned into real anger. <laughs> I'm gonna give myself a fucking heart attack. <sighs> Focus. Stay away to Zeppelin, the original YouTube commenter. 
answer. So they're back to the question of of um champion or mid card, which one's more important? All right, I've let me just read before I guess. I'm gonna screw this up. Good. Edit it out and edit that out and post. We're gonna start over. Let's read Zeppelin's comment. Comment? That's like a comment and an omelet at the same time. Odd. All right, so here we go. Answers. I would rather have a good undercard and a bad champ because the champ can be replaced at one match at any time. Boom, boom. You said the opposite. So Zeppelin has a great point. Would you like to counter his point? No, I mean, I'm, no, I'm not saying he's wrong or anything. But just my opinion is, if you you've got to have a strong champ, you've got to have somebody to draw money. And if you and if you don't have that guy, you can have the best mid card in the in the world. But if you don't have anything drawing power to get people through that door, I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can change things, but you know, you have to have somebody credible to change over to that chip. Top over to, uh, uh, to be that champion, and for him to be that champion, he's got to be a good wrestler that can draw money. All right, so I'm going to be the judge. We have the first ever YouTube commenter, and boom, boom, I'm going to be the judge. And like a judge, I'm going to call it right down the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Alfonso style. <laughs> right down the middle. Yeah. And I'm going to be a coward, like an American judge. <laughs> you are both right. Boom Boom is giving the business answer, and Zeppelin is giving the fan answer. As a businessman, I would agree with Boom Boom. As a fan, I would agree with Zeppelin. And I'm a fan over a businessman. So, Zeppelin wins! Mm. Plus, I don't want to scare him away. He's like one of our best commenters. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just like a real judge, I, I power down to the people. Actually, no, I would be evil and sell out to corporations. This got way too political quick. Yes, it did. Number two. All right. Is, uh, number two. Oh, because the second question is how many weeks? The TNA Challenge. Boom Boom says six. Um, so he's doing about the TNA Challenge, how long he, he it needs to be good. Mm -hmm. right. It's hard because I started watching WWE again because of a single moment, CM Punk's pipe bomb. And I didn't even know if WWE had been putting on good shows the weeks previous to that moment. I wanted to see what would happen and kept watching. So it could just be a good story or even a good wrestling feud to get someone interested again. Ah, all right. So it could be a bang-bang moment. So if TNA has a bang-bang moment, I will let you all know. All right. Stairway to Zeppelin. On TNA's Daniel has to win over AJ. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if it was only me, Zeppelin, and everyone else, the world would be a better place if we all fought the same. I just I just went to a dark place. <laughs> and I think he will this time. Fingers crossed. I hope so. Boom, who you got? AJ or Daniels? Legend you know, just go with face. Uh, yeah, I'll just agree with you. Let's just say let's just say Daniels. You better, you son of a... You're so sleepy. You're sleepy bear now. Mm -hmm. The sad thing about Ryback is that I have already seen Brock Lesnar come to WWE as a heel and monster and do... Uh, did we already do this one? Yeah, uh, we did that okay. one. Heel and monster and do everything Ryback is doing, but Brock did it 100% better. I think that could be... I can agree with that. Brock 100% better in his prime than Ryback's prime? Or beginning, his start? Ooh, that's like an open-ended question to you. Uh, I think Goldberg was better, at least in the... But, but then again, Ryback Not is just... Goldberg. Guys. He's saying Brock's, sucker. Oh, Brock Brock, or, or Brock, excuse me. Yeah, Brock was a lot better. I mean, but then again, Ryback's still in the early stages of his career. Let's give it some time. But as of right now, yeah, Brock did a lot better. All right, and stay away to Zeppelin says, To me, Ryback is like a Chinese Rolex copy. It looks good, but you know it does not work properly. Probably for a very long time. Oh, nice. You got a little chuckle out of me, Zeppelin. Plus 10. And that's the first time we on YouTube we gave a listener points. So you're winning. Oh, and I take it back about Ambrose. I've seen more now, and he could be big if prom if promoted correctly. <gasps> boom, boom! That's all that matters! We have convinced Zeppelin that your boyfriend oh, yeah. is awesome. And ain't that what YouTube's all about? Exactly. All right. Unstoppable monster characters we already hit. 
Uh, he says Mark Henry was awesome as a monster. I agree. I'm paraphrasing oh. here. Um, we already talked about the monster. I'm sorry, I'm skipping. Uh, Ewok, Mr. Ewok says, it's great to see why more than myself and Zeppelin commenting on WrestleAM. I know. Dude, here's the crazy part. And I, lo I love uh, Ewok and Zeppelin, because if it wasn't for them, we'd have no comment times. I, I we, uh, fuck it, let's just shoot. If you listen this far, we average about 500 to 1,000 views. Uh, closer to 1,000, give or take 100, except for Thanksgiving show. Like, I oh, think yeah. it's still under 100. But... I see other shows that get less views than us, but have a shitload of comments. So maybe we have to figure a way to intrigue you guys. I don't know. Leave comments, please. Ask questions. Wait, but we had asked them questions. But last show we asked them questions, and we got mm -hmm. a couple more commenters, so maybe that's what the secret is. Boom, boom, ask him a question about wrestling. A random question. Question of the day from Boom Boom off the top of his head. Leave a comment below and like and subscribe. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Boom -boom. My, my question for the internet community here is, let's just say for whatever reason you were brought into Ring of Honor and they said, okay, your job, we need some ideas from you because you're an internet wrestling fan, you're a big wrestling fan. We want to revive our product. We want to make it great. So... You see what we've got right now. You see how we do business. You see our talent roster. How would you turn Ring of Honor around to bring them back to their glory that they had back in 2002, 2003, 2004, that time? What would you do to revive uh, Ring of Honor? There you go. Oh, nice question. Maybe if we, if we remember that question, I'll answer it next show. Mm -hmm. um, all right, last comment of the day. Um, if there's more, sorry we missed it, and um, we'll get it. If Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley is the talker and Roman and Roman Reigns is the muscle, what is Seth Rollins' role in the Shield? The idiot? Question mark. That's why I think there will be a fourth member slash leader. It could be CM Punk possibly to protect this belt till the Rumble against the Rock, as you revealed on CocoSports.com. Ewok. Anytime you can plug a website in your question, that's minus, th no, not minus, that's plus 20. So Zeppelin, you're down by 10 points. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> man, I'm so grateful for Ewok and Zeppelin. I yep. love you guys. Not to get too emotional. I don't know much about you, but I love you guys. You, <laughs> you know the show's gone too long when you're like, I just love you guys, man. Bring it in, bring it in. Love you guys. Man, All right. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> oh, well, what, will there be a fourth what? leader? And, and what's Seth Rollins' role? I don't know, but the meme, there's a meme out there with Seth Rollins looking straight into the camera, and he's so serious. It's like, Seth Rollins, watch you masturbate. So he could be the, according to internet memes, he could be the masturbator watcher. Um, Ambrose is definitely the talker. I don't know. Punk would, it would be cool. Yeah, I, I can see Punk. Um, Seth Rollins, I can see as kind of like the cool guy. He's not the talker, he's not the muscle, but he's, I'm fucking cool, bitches. What do you think about that? You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, oh, fuck, who was it in The Horseman? Tully Blanchard. Yeah, he's the Tully, Tully Blanchard. First ever, first ever cool deal. Yeah, he's, he's fucking Tully Blanchard. He has a part. He's just fucking awesome. That's his role. All right, so Tully Blanchard reference. I'm going to give myself one point, plus one point. All right, boom, boom, fourth guy. We already talked about uh, Maddox, possibly. Um, CM Punk seems to be the way they're going. Some people are joking it's The Rock, because The Rock dresses the same as The Shield, the G.I. Joe. Mm hmm so, I mean, it could be. I know it's kind of a joke, but yeah, I could see something like that. Boom, boom, what's your thoughts? First off, well, what's Seth Rollins' role besides watching you masturbate? It's simple, actually. We kill the Ryback. <laughs> All right. So, I guess he's the joker. Yeah, you know, he could be the you no, know, he could be the technician. He could be the Tully Blanchard cool guy. As far as the fourth guy, you know, Brad Maddox, you could bring him in. It would make sense. Uh, having Rock, you know, basically protecting Punk and 
you know, saving the title, keeping the title on Punk and saving it, you know, till he can get a hold of him at the Royal Rumble. That would make sense. I honestly think the thing that would blow everybody's mind is if it turns out if everything actually was just a coincidence and Punk had absolutely nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that kind of intriguing to see what it goes on. But it would blow there, everybody's mind. Besides being a punk nut hugger, and we'll end on this, besides being a punk nut hugger, I'm also uh, like long walks on a beach. No, besides being a punk nut hugger, is that. Um, CM Punk says this in his uh, documentary, and he said it in interviews before. The Straight Edge Society could have been so much better. Mm -hmm. The Straight Edge Society did not live up to its potential. Maybe the Shield can live up to its potential. Like, it's a, we're sorry we fucked up the Straight Edge Society. Here's the Shield. And it's kind of, it keeps, it's not an original idea. But it keeps CM Punk a little fresh because, you know, earlier in the comments, I don't know who said it, he's becoming predictable. I think maybe him being that heel, having protection, uh, freshens up the storyline a little bit for when the Pope returns. I mean, The Rock. <laughs> so, man, The Rock has a lot of pull. All right, Boom Boom, you're sleepy. I've got to eat lunch. Time differences. God bless yes. the internet. I don't know why the internet made time differences. God bless not making sense the last minute of our show. Uh, <laughs> boom, boom. Any last thing to say? Because I'm just not making sense at all. You never make sense at all, and this is what I have to listen to every day. I apologize. But, uh, check us out, CocoSports.com. Uh, okay, answer, answer our uh, question, you know, what would you do to turn around and fix Ring of Honor, restore it back to its former glory? Uh, pledge us money so we can start off angry Uh Submit your uh, nominees for our end of the year awards. We're looking for stuff like wrestler of the year, tag team of the year, best improved wrestler of the year, worst storyline slash angle of the year, kind of like our little Gooper award, and plus 10 points if you get that reference. Um, just to, You can nominate anybody for anything really, and we'll uh, tally up the votes, and we'll hand out the awards at the end of the month. So best of luck to you. Thanks for watching us. Uh, tell your friends about us, or better yet, if you hate us, tell your enemies about us. Uh, yes, we realize we're fat and stupid, so no need to put those comments. Ugly. Uh, Ugly. No, 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 not so fast, my fellow friend. No, leave those comments. Because, mm -hmm. dude, like, if you leave a comment and you have subscribers and viewers, it gets sent out. So when you leave a comment trolling and you're like, oh, you're fat and ugly, everyone who follows you gets that comment. And they're like, well, who's fat and ugly? <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're gaming the system. We're going to become internet sensations by being fat and ugly. Yes. Uh -oh, I, wanted, I wanted to do a Britney Spears joke there, but I love Britney too much. I just held it back. I love Britney Spears. And when you're admitting that you love Britney Spears on a podcast, this podcast went too long. Yes. Go, <laughs> go to CocoSports.com, K-O-C-O-Sports.com. And with that, I am over. <laughs>